Well, Emily, we understand you're not done with your surgical journeys here. You, you have another surgery planned? I do, yes. So the CDH1 gene also puts you at a high risk for lobular breast cancer, uh, which is really hard to find through mammograms. So I get MRIs done. Um, but originally they thought it might put you at a 60% chance. Um, but as far as I know, they're not 100% sure what that chance is. So I've already went through one surgery and I wanna be proactive. Again, not putting myself through things that I don't need to go through knowing my risks. So I'm getting a double mastectomy. And these are really tough decisions that you have to make when yeah. you know you have a genetic risk factor for cancer. I do wanna bring in another doctor into the conversation who does this for a living, breast cancer surgeon, Dr. Christy Funk. Dr. Funk, we've talked about genetic risk factors before and preventative double mastectomies. You've heard Emily's story. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts in terms of her having gone through the gastrectomy and, and now the double mastectomy, really essentially reducing her risk of cancer? She's very concerned, rightly so, she'll get. I applaud you, Emily, for taking personal agency over your health destiny. You know your risks, uh, up to 80% chance of gastric cancer, which sadly you know all too well, has a very low survival rate, and up to 52% chance of invasive lobular cancer of the breast. So these are not extreme measures. They're not for everybody, even with a CDH1 mutation, but they are certainly valid and strong choices, and I'm proud of you for making them. Thank you. That's like, how do you counsel your patients when you're talking about percentages and, and trying to figure out what increased risk is quite frankly enough to consider something like a preventative mm -hmm. uh, double mastectomy? I think for sure 30% lifetime risk of breast cancer and greater is worthy of a discussion of risk-reducing mastectomy. In Emily's case, it's up to 52%, and lobular, as she noted, is hard to detect. It's sneaky. It's often diagnosed at later stages because it doesn't necessarily form, boom, just obvious mass. And by the way, so does the stomach cancer. It's called diffuse gastric cancer. It's kind of infiltrating inside the stomach lining, so you do random biopsies everywhere trying to find it, often unsuccessfully. The conversation for me when talking about mastectomy helps me when I get inside that woman's head and her life a little bit. And it always comes down to a simple decision. Uh, would you feel more peace and confidence and comfort in life traveling a road of surveillance but keeping your breast intact, knowing that we'll do imaging, MRI, ultrasound, biopsies when we need to, but we'll just keep a close watch on you versus removing the organ at risk? I think that's such a great way to look at it. And what, what's really cool for me having you here, Emily, is you seem very much at peace with your decisions. <laughs> and I wanna ask you as you sit here today, you've had your stomach removed, I know you're playing on the double mastectomy, you've lost your father, how are you doing with all of this now? It's definitely a lot to deal with, um, but first off, something that I'm not shy about at all is I did see a counselor for quite some time. Um, I think that's a really important thing to note because we see people go through all these things and wonder how they went through them, but I had quite a bit of help from her and. She gave me a lot of tools on how to deal with things and kind of made me realize that asking for help, it doesn't show weakness, but it shows strength. But also I just tend to have a more positive attitude about things and I think I got that from my parents. They're both really, really positive people and so I try to focus on the things I do have um, instead of the things I don't. Like I said earlier, and I say this all the time, but I would have rather had my dad in my life for 22 years than anybody else because uh, he was so amazing. And then as for my stomach, I mean, I may have not made it to 25 or 30 years old, so I don't have a stomach, but I'll get to live a lot longer this way, so. Yeah. No, your dad would be incredibly proud of you. Yeah. And you. you're a shine, shining example of, in life, you make informed decisions towards your health. Ask as many people as you need to and, and, and really make the best decision for you. I wanna thank you, Dr. Davis and Dr. Funk for weighing in. And certainly, Emily, we wish you nothing but the best in your future.